morning, everybody. Hello, uh, those of you who don't know, uh, my name is Veronica. I'm the dean of the School of Media and IT, and it's my late, pre late pleasure to invite you to our um, Wednesday live conference series, today conferences with Simon the Dane, topic of AI adapts, and it's probably the best I give the word to, uh, to my colleague Simon Bodnia. So hi, everybody. I'm the program leader for Creative Media Production. Um, welcome. This is our second conference of the year for this is the School of Media and IT. If some of you came to our first one, it was about, um, well, it's called Reality in Real. And so we had a topic in that talk about AI and it was extremely popular. And so we realized that this year, this is like when AI got serious, basically. So we decided to put this conference on. We realized that it's already being used by you as students. It's a topic which is at times controversial. Um, you know, especially in media in terms of the news around the strikes that have happened and what's happening with OpenAI and the CEO. So we want to kind of open up the conversation of what AI is, how it's being used, the potential of it, and we hope to inspire, maybe create debate. We hope to engage you. Please ask lots of questions. This is about you um, to ask questions, to investigate, um, and we hope that you enjoy Please stay around. Um, we have uh, talks until about 4.30, um, and especially towards the end, after lunch, they will be a lot more hands-on and a lot more practical. So especially at the end, please do stay on because you'll get more kind of workshop style um, lectures. So thank you. So I want to thank all of our school media and IT teams that uh, use um, AI and other types to be in front of, be it for media or computer students to start with knowledge, to start with facts, so following on this so I'd like to thank the organizing team. It's Maya Bodnia, Masha Hatshishin, Simon Le, Radek Mondi, Grigor Šlipka, who is the most present here, Bato for the IT support, and of course Arthur who organized all the events. So I'd like to thank them all. For being here. <laughs> and without further ado, I'd like to invite you, enjoy, and it's my great pleasure for the first speaker to be Petr Švarný, which is Data AI and IoT topic. Thank you. Today's conference be quite different from all the rest um, because, as I'm sure you've read the uh, abstract, uh, the idea of data AI and IoT, uh, IoT here on a technical difference, basically throwing around sensors and sharp eye chunks so that you can collect a lot of data, will be um, mainly about how you can face very difficult problems with. For the outline of my talk, I'll first present my background because I'm a very narcissistic person. <laughs> then I'll show uh, what I call data-driven AI, um, example co in contrast to what I would call reality-driven AI, and then move to AI in Porn, which is the main thing I'm uh, working on currently, and especially uh, the case study of uh, college monitoring. So as I said, the journey which I took will basically be, be also kind of the journey which I'll try to demonstrate in this uh, presentation. I started out with AI theory. It was also the time when uh, the computational power wasn't that sufficient, uh, that uh, prevalent as today. So logics and having purely all sorts of just theoretical ideas of symbolic AI and all that, and writing that out on whiteboards and thinking about like how could computers exceed our skills and mathematical linguistics doing complex diagrams of languages. And as AI progressed, I shifted more and more into applied AI. Uh, I started working at uh, applied machine learning in uh, Switzerland for targeting people with advertisements or finding the proper uh, results for their searches, uh, then doing uh, my robotics research. So finally some actual robot physical interaction of my AI with the world and 
and then finding the most difficult problems in uh, country agriculture or in general AI with sensor and user driven. If you're boring, you can do that with cars, but everyone does that with AI. So that's why it's also boring. So first question, what in general is AI? I go into it. I quite know the term because it's very wide, but uh, you can have the context which you're, I'm 100% sure familiar already are things like practical AI of uh, image recognition, which you encounter every time you're doing search or when you have, uh, when you're taking pictures, face recognition and all that stuff. So that's uh, practical AI, uh, which you meet on a daily basis, maybe often without even knowing. And then uh, generative AI, which you've encountered probably also, and we had a talk a little bit more uh, in the afternoon about that. So the one thing which these have in common is that generally you have, uh, what you're working with are very nice data. So it's usually what you encounter as a path, you see AI in general, especially <coughs> in general term, and you think like, man, the cow is being milked, and based on that, you can't, uh, if you would want to have the exact numbers of proteins or the fat content of the milk, which you need to have in order to ascertain the quality of the milk, because for example, farmers, when they're selling milk, they're selling it based on how good it is. How good it is means how much fat it has. So if you're selling that milk, you should need, you want to have that information. But no, normally how you would get it is send it into a lab, which uh, machine learning and figure out then the fat content and the uh, protein content and so on and give at least if not the exact number then a very good estimate of hey this is a high quality milk this is a low quality milk and you can sell it for so much and so on. Now uh, again for a small interaction one of the robots which will work in my main room is this milking robot so sometimes it can be not clear but what do you think would be like an AI worthy problem for a milking robot to figure out. Can you guess what I say? No, no, no. <laughs> That's very good observation. Very good observation. That's Maybe four others with this LM. Any other answers? It means that it's applying the object in the proper model. Yeah, so you have you have these. Uh, the classical example of vision. Funny thing is, for example, the vision part is basically solved. That's easy nowadays. That's already, uh, you can notice here there's like a small laser beam hitting before. And that's basically, that's also one nice thing in uh, if you face reality. Reality is complex. You can see also a lot of MLP say that shit. So that's the, the environment is very messy. You have the cow, which is a live animal, which might move around and so on. And not just cows, even people. Like if you if you do a face recognition entrance to PCU, then people might just come in and be bored, so they look a little bit different and so on, or they have a scarf and it's winter and they'll go like, why was it? So you get a good enough image of where the others are, or, and you can properly aim for them. But what's not done yet, and we're working on, and we have first versions of that, is personalization. We haven't come up with a better name or something but like every single cow as you mentioned also for its readiness for how well it for you've noticed here there's a brushing going on before that so how much cleaning a given cow likes because it can be different like someone takes uh, humans someone takes a shower for 30 minutes someone takes for five minutes and it's enough for them similarly for the cows if, if you over clean a cow it gets stressed it's going like what the hell is happening if you clean too little, it's dirty. 
the more quality goes down and so on. So you can have also very non-trivial problems uh, which you might not see at the first sight. Like who would think about let's personalize milky for Anne? But yeah, those are also individual and they're by the way super cute and super um, uh, clever and very much animals of habit. So like if you make them used to you coming into the barn at five o'clock, dare not to come. They will be very disappointed with you. <laughs> so a case study which I would show you for hitting the reality ball with more detail is this uh, calf monitoring, uh, which I've mentioned in the outline. So the general idea would be simple, right? I have calves, um, <coughs> small cows who grow. I want them to grow steadily. Uh, if I want to figure out if they're getting enough feed, I want to know how much and don't have any movement problems or similar or behavioral problems. And if I get all this data with a bunch of sensors replaced in the barn or next to, for example, this is like a feeding uh, pen for the cows, then uh, I can get all that data and the farmer then can just modern farming. Like he comes into an office, there's a PC, he checks, oh, calf 226 is uh, sick. So I'll just fetch the calf, give him some medicine, get a notification. Uh, the farmers even have like uh, apps on their phones. So you just like, oh, damn, calf. 220 is like acting up and doesn't eat enough. So let's fetch him and solve that problem. So in theory, that seems clear and easy, right? Maybe moms would love to have that on their kids also. Like, are you growing enough? Are you eating enough? And so, on. and so if you would apply it, you would get a nice uh, scenario with a dashboard with data where you can see the calf is underperforming, overperforming, everything's fine. Uh, you can see when the calf enters the fever, you can see the silhouette of the calf and measure how much it has grown from last time. Awesome. And then comes reality. The data gets very messy. You can notice on the uh, diagram on the right that basically, uh, right, that basically the calf's uh, height can change from like 0.6 to one meter, which is like, what the hell is happening with that calf? Because reality, that's the hard problem. It might break your bones and it's relying on detecting people based on that depth camera data. So always when you face that reality, you <coughs> get really challenging problems. Um, examples of other issues uh, on your uh, left, that's quite clear, you know, it's animals, or same as people. Have you tried to get off the tram in Prague? There's a scuffle, everyone's pushing themselves trying to get in, get out. The same thing happens with calves also, like, hey, there's food in the feeding pen. I wanna go there too. So we have two calves there. So now if we measure the height, we might measure actually the head also. So suddenly, yeah, my calf number one has, um, 20, 30 centimeters of loss in their height for some weird reason. And unless I look at the image itself, I can't tell. So I have to detect that or compensate in some way. And uh, if you notice on the second example, it's the image from the same camera. But something changed, except for, you know, there's a cough. The camera got moved. My measurements can be very different. If you imagine just a depth uh, camera, for example, so if I'm measuring this distance basically with my camera and suddenly I shift, then that distance is changed. So that's again an example where my calves can suddenly become like three meter uh, high monster. Aesthetically satisfactory if we succeed, if we find that solution, because always worst case, what I use as a uh, criteria is hey, if I'm able as a human to do that, there must be a way. It might be difficult, but there must be a way to do that with the software also. And um, it has also a lot of space for clever solutions. One of the things which I love, which, I, which convinced me to go from uh, Seznam and working with just, you know, your clicks on the internet, like, have you, uh, Smartlib, has, uh, has anyone used Smartlib? It's in the dashboard. That's a website where you can um, track the activity on your website, 
of users, and you see everything quite obvious, I guess, to our generation. You uh, even c uh, communicate with the farmers or with the users of your physical hardware. There's always immediate impact of what they're doing and how they're perceiving the results of your work, as opposed to you know, um, people started using our website more based on our A/B test. They use the first variant a lot more. So I guess wouldn't. Singularity, I'll, I'll take that one. Sure. So singularity. Um, yeah, so from my point of view.